Hey, this is Lee Patterson at Stantec. I am the chief pilot for our drone operations here in New Zealand and a geotechnical engineer uh, based out of Dunedin. Um, this is an example on how we treat our point cloud surfaces to make them a little bit more manageable. Um, the example we're looking at here is the Deep Stream Creek um, pipeline scour problem. We had a, a survey that we did for the Dunedin City Council to look at um, uh, an exposed pipeline crossing the deep stream. You can see here, it's quite a nice resolution photography. Um, this was taken at about 70 meters flight altitude. Um, we took the drone essentially to give us a, a good bird's eye view of what the problem was, but also to allow us to, um, to do some cross-section analyses um, and to look uh, further afield. You can see that the crossing is both at this point uh, and it also has a second crossing um, uh, across, I can't remember the name of the, I think it's Flagstaff Creek, um, here, um, what we'll see here is that we don't just have the plan imagery on, uh, on our PIX4D model, we also have the, uh, 3D imagery, um, this is incredibly useful for, um, for visualising the site, uh, and going through consultation processes with the client to see how we want to, um, address the solution. Uh, in this instance, I think we, uh, we were simply enough uh, rip wrapping in and around the pipe to uh, to stop any further steam, stream degradation at that point. Um, but uh, but the job was interesting. Uh, there's only so much you see you can use this pictographical model for. Um, it doesn't have uh, an awful lot of ability to cross cut cross sections. Uh, you can see the vegetation is uh, quite present. Um, it's not a true digital terrain model. So what we do is we uh, we export this information. Um, there's a whole bunch of output options. Uh, one of the options that we have from the process model is a point cloud. So what I'm going to do now is pop across to our point cloud view, which I've opened in Cloud Compare. Um, and we have uh, this model here, uh, which is um, the full point cloud, it looks like a 3D mesh model, but actually if you start to zoom in close enough, uh, you start to see that uh, these are actually individual points uh, that are uh, getting spat out by the photogrammetry um, processing software. So in this instance, um, what we've done is we have used the, uh, I've actually got the wrong one turned on, we've used the, uh, this is the full point cloud, we've used a plugin within uh, cloud Compare, uh, which is called uh, a surface uh, filter. So you highlight the layer that you'd like to check. I tend to choose uh, steep slope uh, with slope processing. Um, there's a cloth resolution. I like to think of the, the, the cloth under tension and a certain resolution. Um, the smaller that you make the cloth resolution, um, the higher the processing load of the computer, um, but the less likely it is to cut off crests on slopes and things like that. Uh, the classification threshold is a distance off the uh, the cloth where it will it will cull points. I tend to leave it at about 0.5 meters but I have gone down as low as 0.2 meters or 0.3 meters when I have a, a very low altitude flight with high resolution um, information on grasses even that I'm looking to get rid of. So here we go for uh, about 0.5 meter cloth resolution and uh, 0.5 and, I'll, and hopefully we'll show the processing here. Um, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but not a huge amount of time. Hopefully you'll be able to um, uh, see that process um, getting done. Um, and at the end of it, um, you end up with yeah, this model here, which is uh, looks exactly the same, but it's now been separated into ground points, which I can disappear and leave us with uh, ostensibly vegetation or, or high points. Um, this vegetation is, is nice to have from a reference perspective, but it's not terribly useful and it's not a useful part of the DTM. Um, so you end up with ground points. Uh, if you take away the vegetation, you can see some holes left in our survey. Um, so uh, there are ways to get this information into uh, quite useful terms for our CAD guys. This is several billion points at the moment. Uh, which can be a little bit too much for our CAD operators to process. Um, but obviously the point cloud, um, it's nicely in terms, also with the underlying ortho imagery 
that we get from Cloud Compare. So if I turn this off for a second, um, what I have done is I've run this uh, through a tool here, which is called Projection and Rasterize. Um, at the moment, I'm choosing quite a coarse resolution because this is a reasonably large scale model. Um, if you make this step too small, then uh, for contouring purposes, it can be quite uh, quite a horrible looking contour model. Um, so anyway, so what we do is we set this at, uh, I'm looking for the minimum height. Um, I don't want to resample the input cloud out, I want real points. I've chosen to interpolate wherever there's holes in the model. Um, if you don't interpolate, then you, you end up with essentially um, uh, the process uh, either leaving holes or, or diving down to the bottom of the model. Um, yeah, so what we do is we upgrade to the grid uh, and we end up with something that looks like this. Now I can, uh, here I've actually got interpolate. Uh, let me try that. If I leave it empty and update the grid, uh, you will see that it's actually probably a little bit more pretty in terms of the model because you've got true points being modeled only, uh, but you do end up with holes. Um, those holes get to be a little bit interesting if we do a contour plot. So if I do a contour plot of that information and I make this something sensible uh, within the zone of the model, and I generate that contour model, export that model, uh, let me turn off everything except that model, uh, and let me turn this so that it's a plan view. Uh, so that model is, actually that's pretty interesting because that's all those points. So that model, you can see the high points of the trees. Uh, it's quite a, it's quite a good model. Uh, there will also be, uh, excuse me, the, the boundary conditions are, are not terribly useful. It just dives down at the bottom of the model. But, um, but you can see we have quite a nice looking contour plot there. Um, if, however, I take just the uh, ground points, uh, yeah, with the holes in the model. Um, if I was to do the same thing with with that ground point uh, and create exactly the same contour, let's do that. Tools, projection, update the grid so that we are essentially leaving empty. So we've got quite a few holes in the model. Um, if I go to the contour plot and again pick the same parameters and generate a section and export that section, um, what we will see if I turn off the pretty picture is that we've got quite a lot of holes. Uh, so these holes are uh, not, they're reflecting the holes in the model, but we don't actually have holes in the ground there. So the contour plot starts to give us a uh, huge damaged uh, contour model. So what I tend to do in those instances is uh, I kill that. I go back to my contour, my ground model, and I use tools, projection, and again, have exactly the same parameters, but instead of leaving empty, uh, I interpolate on these holes. Uh, it's probably good to tell your clients that that's what you're doing, so that they're not too relying too much on this, but it does make a much better uh, model. So we lose the, uh, because we've got all the way from zero up to the top of the model, it's, it's less pretty. Um, but if I go to my contour plot and I just limit it to something similar to what we had before, um, and I generate that contour plot and export that contour plot. We should hopefully, yeah, now we have a model which is at least flatly interpolating between the boundaries of those holes. Uh, so when I turn off the, uh, the ground model, you can see we now have quite a, a good looking model. We, we, we can see the low points associated with the streams. Uh, and if I start uh, flicking between that and the contour from the including vegetation, you can see how uh, essentially we're now closer to having a DTM rather than a uh, terrain model, assuming that we've got uh, trees as ground. Um, so this is essentially a one meter contour plot of this particular job. Uh, we can underlay the original imagery again. Um, and now I get to something along the lines of, uh, of what my CAD guys are delighted to use.